I'm Annie Haas. Uh, I am the program co-lead for Incubate Energy Labs, and it's my pleasure to introduce to you today Team Gridfruit. Um, we'll get right to it, and I'd like to turn the mic over to Jesse Thornburg. And uh, Jesse, tell us who you are about Gridfruit and what it is you do. Thanks, Annie. I'm Jesse Thornburg, co-founder of Gridfruit. We're really excited to be partnering with Southern California Edison and EPRI for Incubate Energy Labs 2020. My team formed Gridfruit from energy technology we developed at MIT and Carnegie Mellon University. We reduce energy bills for food businesses by optimizing how their refrigeration runs. We do this by building digital twins of the food businesses, and then we use artificial intelligence with refrigeration data, so our software learns and accommodates the needs of each food business. This in turn helps the grid by reducing peak demand and greenhouse gas emissions. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jesse. Appreciate that. We're going to pivot next to Edwin Hornquist. And Edwin, you want to introduce yourself, please, and talk about why this project, why Gridfruit, and why it's important to you at SCE. My name is Edwin Hornquist. I'm with Southern California Edison. I oversee the Emerging Technologies Program at Edison uh, and statewide. Uh, the, the fundamental reason why we were attracted to this project initially or this technology was uh, the fact that we was focusing on a on an important area for the utility the area where we we are trying to manage our evening peak we're trying to manage our four to nine peak um, but also we want to do it smartly uh, by by providing benefits to our customers and the question was the fundamental question that Gridford brought to us was we can do this and we can do it with no impact to the customer uh, and bringing value to both to you and to the customer. And uh, not only that, we're focusing on convenience stores uh, initially as part of this pilot uh, demonstration that essentially reduces the, uh, the risk for us uh, on subsequent uh, uh, phases of this project. And, and by focusing on an underserved market, we felt that uh, addressing also program needs. So uh, not only it presented an opportunity for, for, for this market that have been underserved for many years, but also the potential for a, a growth beyond its current uh, uh, application. Thank you. Thanks so much, Edwin. So we'll turn it over to Ami Amarnath from EPRI now. So Ami, you introduce yourself and then talk a little bit about what we did in this demonstration and what the results were. Thank you, Annie. Um, again, you know, my name is Ami Amanath. Uh, I'm a senior technical executive uh, in the customer in the customer uh, solutions group at EPRI. Um, I manage energy efficiency, demand response, and related areas uh, of research. Uh, so this whole idea, like Edwin mentioned, is uh, reduction of peak demand. And and uh, one of the underserved markets is convenience stores, you know, stores like 7-Eleven. So the whole idea is to use this artificial intelligence platform and modeling technology that Jesse and his team has developed at Gridfruit and explore this possibility of uh, testing it in, uh, in several stores in Southern California and in California in general. Because of COVID, we went forward with doing a simulation uh, of this whole whole area using their artificial intelligence platform. And like Edwin mentioned in the three areas, you know, that is of importance. One is uh, reduction in uh, in uh, uh, bills for the customer, which is one of the most important area. Second is peak reduction for the utility. And thirdly, related to uh, greenhouse gas reduction. The modeling exercise that we did showed that for the whole state of California, you know, there are over 12,000 of these small convenience stores. We can see approximately 7.5% reduction in bill savings for the customers, approximately 4.5% of peak reduction, and 4.7% of greenhouse gas reduction. So this is a, a wonderful exercise 
you know, for Southern California Edison Service Territory, the results are more or less similar. And uh, and uh, and this is what the results of the of the project were. Thank you, Annie. Hey, excellent, Ami. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to shift it back to Edwin. Um, Edwin, so what do these results mean for Southern California Edison, and what's next? Yeah, so um, as Ami mentioned, the potential is pretty large uh, in, in focusing on an underserved part of our customer base. Um, so uh, the, the savings are, are real, savings are uh, potentially scalable to other uh, similar end uses and that, that have refrigeration type equipment. Uh, which is very exciting. So this alone represents already a, a pretty pretty interesting opportunity, very impactful opportunity when at scale, uh, and it does deliver savings to the consumer. Um, so what we want to see next is um, is really validating these uh, outcomes in a way uh, in in situ uh, at uh, 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 you know through some sort of a, a, a field demonstration. Um, and the idea is that. That by by doing this, we'll be able to to really understand um, uh, any other barriers that potentially could uh, crop up in, in the in the in the course of implementing these solutions. There are uh, uh, there is a roadmap that Jesse may talk about a little bit later, perhaps, but um, it talks about how some of these. Uh, um, Less challenging and, 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 and easier implementation pathway pathways are, but um, we're excited about um, that we were able to validate with with very fairly good degree of certainty where the opportunities are and uh, and um, and bring value this way. And uh, we're excited for Grid Fruit and and partnering with them and, and continuing to understand this uh, potential solution better. Edwin. Jesse, could you talk a little bit more about what this means for Gridfruit? Definitely. Yeah, through this project, we were able to um, show the benefits we pro provide at a new scale. As Ami mentioned, that's basically looking at uh, effects in the convenience stores across SoCal Edison and across the whole state of California. And the reductions he mentioned translate to $13.5 million in annual savings for Edison's convenience stores and $24 million in annual savings across California. So we have been um, actually expanding on those results and the digital twins. Now we're modeling larger stores to even throw that into the aggregation and look at the results, partnering uh, the control in larger stores with the convenience stores. Um, thankfully, Edwin and his team are introducing us to food stores for that in situ field testing. And um, we're also in advanced talks with several utilities in the Southeast who are interested in these results and the demand reduction and emissions reductions that we're uh, demonstrating for Southern California Edison. Great, thank you. Ami, in 30 seconds, what do these results mean for EPRI and what's next? I think, uh, thank you, Amy. I think uh, Edwin and uh, Jesse have uh, expanded on this and essentially, it's really to validate uh, the technology in doing some real live testing in convenience stores. That's item number one. Expanding it around the country, you know, doing a collaborative test with a bunch of other utilities. And finally, expanding it beyond just the peak reduction in the defrost cycles, you know, perhaps looking at the HVAC loads optimization and things of that nature. So this is a very exciting project and we are excited to move forward. Thank you.